Together we can change the world. And actually, we're going to have to because the WF have got some fantastic ideas about how to do it. They come up with suggestions like digital ID. Now, let's look at how the world is truly run. Or not, it could be a conspiracy, but when you see Klaus Schwab, and we've done a great video about Klaus Schwab before, you will own nothing and you will be happy, which sounds like a conspiratorial idea, doesn't it? Oh, that's just a conspiracy. You're a conspiracy nut. Then you find out that financial uh, partnerships and hedge funds and stuff are purchasing homes that would usually have been low to middle income American homes in suburbia, and now you can't buy those homes. So it's sort of like you will own nothing, but I don't be happy. Let's see what they have to say about their young WE youth program that seems to produce an uncanny number of leaders before getting on to the proposals for digital ID. And we'll ask, are we moving towards social credit in a crazy China stroke black mirror way? When I mention our names like Mrs. Merkel, um, even uh, Vladimir Putin and so on, they all have been young global leaders of the World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. But... Um, what we are very proud of now is the young generation like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, President of, Brazil, of uh, Argentina and so on, that we penetrate the cabinets. I don't think I like the sound of that. We penetrate the cabinets. So yesterday I was at a, rece at a reception for Prime Minister Trudeau and I know that half of this cabinet or even more half of uh, half of this cabinet are for our uh, actually young global leaders of the world economy right. form. Well, what a coincidence. That certainly puts to bed all those ideas that Davos and the WEF are part of a global conspiracy where powerful people come together and discuss ideas and then collaborate in how to inculcate those ideas and instantiate them without democratic process. I mean, the idea that they've all been meeting up in secret and making deals is certainly quashed when you see Klaus Schwab, the founder, saying, well, I was very surprised that nearly everybody that had penetrated that cabinet had previously penetrated the WEF. And that's true in Argentina, too. Wow. Sort your mic out. We're not going to let you run the world can't even run a microphone yeah sorry that's true in argentina as well it's true in argentina and uh, it's true in france now mm -hmm. i'm here with the president oh, okay so you're just running france and canada and argentina it's, don't worry though don't be a conspiracy theorist okay so now we've shown that they're very good at getting their stooges not stooges professional politicians into positions of power. Now let's see what policies and ideas they have. The World Economic Forum, an international organisation that works to shape global, regional and industry agendas. They're so good with language, aren't they? We're just shaping the agenda. What shape is it? One that can penetrate easily. We penetrate Canada. We penetrate France. We penetrate Argentina. Given half a chance. They published recently their latest proposal, a far-reaching digital ID system that will collect as much data as possible on individuals, then use this data to determine their level of access to various services. Oh, that's not terrifying. That's not literally science fiction. This digital ID proposal is outlined in a report titled Advancing Digital Agency, The Power of Data Intermediaries. Sometimes they use soft, fluffy language that sort of just seems nice and gentle. And other times it's bureaucratic, technocratic language that's so sort of boring you can't be bothered to think about what it actually means. But I'll tell you what it means. Having so much data on you that they can assess you and reduce you to that data, then using that data to determine what you can have access to. Now, if you think about a story we've done recently about Canada and the bank account freezing gear, which had happened before over, you know, in America with the WikiLeaks situation. They've got information on you. They've got the ability to freeze your bank accounts. Does that sound like a lovely little rosy future? I mean, how nice are haircuts are some of these tyrants going to have to have for you to keep believing that everything's OK? and built upon a digital ID framework that the WF has published previously. Under this framework, the WEF proposes collecting data from many aspects of people's everyday lives through their devices, telecommunications networks and third party service providers. The World Economic Forum suggests that this data collection dragnet would allow a digital ID to scoop up data on people's online behaviour, purchase history, network usage, credit history, biometrics, names, national identities, medical history, travel history, social accounts, e-government accounts, bank accounts, energy usage, health stats, education and more. But other than that, 
privacy. Well, I don't like to pry. I only penetrate a little bit. Once the digital ID has access to this huge, highly personal data set, the World Economic Forum proposes using it to decide whether users are allowed to own and use devices, open bank accounts, carry out online financial transactions, conduct business transactions, access insurance treatment, book trips. I think I'll just book a trip. Do you want me penetrating any trips, my boy? Go through border controls between countries or regions, access third-party services that rely on social media logins, file taxes, vote and collect benefits. Yeah, but other than that, I'll be private. Oh, yes, yes. I don't like to pry. In this advancing digital agency, the Power of Data Intermediaries report, the World Economic Forum positions this digital ID framework as the part of the solution to a trust gap in data sharing and notes that vaccine passports, which were mandated across the world during the COVID-19 pandemic, do by nature serve as a form of digital identity. Oh, wow. Do you remember that some people were saying these vaccine passports, even though what you're being told is it's for medical reasons to help prevent the spread of a virus and to save lives, which anyone would agree is a good idea, the concern might be that it becomes a template for future measures that enable centralised technocratic institutions to exploit and control you. The World Economic Forum also praises the way vaccine passports have allowed governments to harvest data from their populations without notice and consent. Do you know what I really liked? The way you harvested that data without notice or even consent. You were able to penetrate almost entirely. I'd ask how you did it. But I don't like to apply. At a collective level, vaccine data is an incredible public health asset. The United Kingdom government in particular has acknowledged this and has suggested that anonymisation, pseudonymisation and data shielding techniques could be harnessed in a controlled environment to allow for the reuse of that highly sensitive data. We did a video about that. What that meant was that the government was selling data harvested under the pretext of health measures, and we've got to do this, vaccine passports, all of that, they were saying, and then you had to actively opt out of it to not be included, but they didn't tell you that they were doing it. You didn't opt out of what? Nothing. I mean, if you don't tell us, how are we meant to opt out? We did a video about it, and so did a bunch of other people, and that slowed it down. But you know what they do? They boot it down the line, do it a bit later when no one's looking. There's a war! There's a Joe Rogan! Right, put that stuff on. Additionally, the World Economic Forum provides a specific example of how digital IDs could be used to authenticate a user by using fingerprints, a password, or identity verification technology, and decide whether they should be granted access to a bank loan by judging their profile, which may include their biometrics, name and national identity number, and history, which may include their credit, medical and online purchasing history. Maybe they're not evil. Maybe it's just they want things to be really neat and tidy, and human beings are not neat and tidy. We're varied and messy and peculiar and confusing, and government is control and requires order and metrics and data and information and all this technology and these capacities must be incredibly attractive. But just as it is their duty to try and impose it, so it is ours to resist it, to oppose it, to see it. This push for an invasive digital ID system from the World Economic Forum follows it proposing other similar surveillance systems such as turning your heartbeat into a digital ID. That's so ridiculous it can't be true. So let's watch the video of it actually happening. Let's put this nice, like, friendly music on it, in it, like it's a sort of a nice thing that's happening. Your heartbeat is just as unique as your face, and we can smash both under the hammer of our tyranny. Let's just stop making these videos. I don't think they're having the desired effect. They seem to think that everyone's going to watch this and go, oh, this is brilliant, so lovely now. I can be identified by my heartbeat. Who's going to be identifying you? hideous technocratic tyrants that will shut down your bank accounts if you don't agree with absolutely everything they say and sit obediently bolt upright in your little chair and shut your mouth and do as you're told for the rest of your life. But, I mean, all this technology is potentially beautiful and incredible in the right hand, democratically understood, consensually used. Fantastic, wonderful, you geniuses, congratulations. But under the auspices of what's been going on, 
Throughout the pandemic, the World Economic Forum has consistently advocated for vaccine passports and digital ID. Yeah, I bet they have. Beyond these specific proposals, the World Economic Forum is infamous for its agendas, such as the Great Reset and the Fourth Industrial Revolution, which, according to Klaus Schwab, will lead to a fusion of our physical, our digital and our biological identities. So I disagree very, very strongly with anything that leads to centralised global power because you can see what happens in the event of these things occurring already. We've seen it in the last few years. Governments and private corporations are increasingly embracing digital IDs. Some governments are also pushing a similar notion, social credit style apps that monitor citizens' behaviour and reward them for engaging in state-approved actions. I mean, bloody hell, you could almost look at the entire history of social media as heading to this point. Look how it was introduced in such a jocular manner. Hey, look, Facebook, you can flirt with people. You can catch up with your old school buddies. <laughs> Why don't you tell us what you're thinking? <laughs> Why don't you tell us what you'd like to buy? <laughs> Why don't we control your every move till you're in the grave and then we'll decide how many people can go to your funeral or if you're even allowed a funeral or not. <laughs> Mayors like New York City's Eric Adams intends to expand facial recognition as a way for the police to identify problems, follow up on leads and collect evidence. You can see how these things in the right hands, but again, what is the right hands for power of this nature and potential magnitude? You could go, no, because we were only dead. But look at what's going on in Canada. Oh, we're only just... It will get misused, will it? We already know how this ends. I've seen this film. I've already seen this film. You know, like, oh, we're just trying to prevent crime. I mean, that actually is Minority Report, isn't it? Amnesty International says that the city's main law enforcement agency already uses images, sometimes scraped from the internet, to compare and match with its own suspect and felon database, and then also those obtained from some 15,000 surveillance cameras installed all around New York. They're pretty well covered. NYPD's use of facial recognition technology has been described as unscientific by Georgetown Law's Centre on Privacy and Technology, Jameson Spivak. This now goes so far that officers on occasion when they cannot find a match with a security video image of a suspect go ahead and try and match it with that of a look-alike celebrity. In one case, it was a photo of Woody Arlson. <laughs> How's that helping? Woody Arlson ain't done anything. When the software turned up matches for the actor, the police identified and arrested one of the matches that they thought resembled the suspect from the security cam footage, writes Reason. Wait a minute. That looks a lot like Woody Arlson. <laughs> well, I'm a Woody Arlson look-alike. You're under arrest, sir! Taking your way in the world today takes everything you've got. We're taking everything you've got! So there you go then, whether it's experience of working with people that go on to become political leaders or the introduction of ideas that go on to be internationally accepted, it seems like the WEF, Klaus Schwab, Davos, do have some impact on reality. You look at those films, you see the stuff they make, you hear the stuff they say, you see the way it's being implemented. I know this will be labelled as conspiracy by some, and of course, in a free world, they're welcome to do that. But I'm only interested in stuff we can see and put together ourselves. Like, are those policies happening? You decide for yourself. Are bank accounts getting frozen anywhere? Are people being monitored? Is there surveillance? Is there data capture? Are there suggestions of global digital ID? You can decide that for yourself. Is this what you want? At the moment, you can decide for yourself, but a day may yet come where you lose the ability to decide, so stay awake.